The 2016-2017 NBA regular season has definitely lived up to my expectations, and that's because we witnessed one of the greatest MVP races in NBA history. Today I'll be breaking down the top 5 players I think deserve to be in the MVP conversation, saving the best for last, so make sure you stay to the end of the video. Number 5 on my list may come as a surprise to some, but I have to mention the 2 time reigning MVP, Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry's greatness has definitely been underrated and overshadowed this season with the arrival of Kevin Durant. Kind of similar to what Dwayne Wade went through when LeBron arrived in Miami. A lot of critics have gone in on Curry saying that he's had a down year. And while that may be true when compared to last year's unanimous MVP performance, when you look at the numbers, Curry's been fairly consistent across the board. This year, Curry averaged 25 points per game, the second highest average in his career, while making more than 300 three-pointers for the second season in a row. Not to mention, when KD went out due to injury and the team was struggling, Curry stepped up and helped lead the Golden State Warriors to 12 straight victories through one of the toughest stretches of the season, helping secure the number one seed in the NBA. But while wins are definitely a crucial factor when considering a player for MVP, I don't think it's the be all end all for this conversation. Number four on my list is arguably the best player in the world, LeBron James. LeBron has put together another great season, averaging 26 points per game, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists, while shooting 54% from the field. The only stat that's had a significant drop off is his free throw percentage, which I think is an anomaly, and it probably won't be this slow ever again in his career. We've grown so accustomed to seeing LeBron perform at such an elite level that a lot of times he's overlooked when considering the MVP. Some people would even go as far as giving LeBron the MVP every single year because of his postseason dominance. The guys made it to six straight NBA Finals, potentially seven, which is an amazing accomplishment. But with all that said, I still don't think he deserves the MVP this year. Partially because winning the MVP isn't based on previous accomplishments or postseason accolades, and partially because his team struggled a lot this year. The Cavs went 23-23 and in their last 46 games, which means that for more than half of the season, LeBron's amazing stats didn't have that much of an impact on Ws. This isn't the kind of performance you expect from the reigning NBA champs. Of course, some of these losses can be attributed to injuries and inconsistencies in the lineup, but some of the blame has to fall on the shoulders of LeBron James, the leader of the team. There were many moments throughout the season where LeBron openly expresses frustrations, and I think that kind of took its toll on the team. That's why LeBron's not my MVP this season. Number three. Kawhi Leonard. With Tim Duncan having retired last season, the baton has officially been passed to Kawhi Leonard, who is now the face of the Spurs franchise and the star player they build around. Kawhi is arguably the best two-way player in the league, and his stats have steadily been on the rise with every year he plays. This is actually his best season, and he's averaging 25 points per game, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. Kawhi's performance, alongside Greg Popovich's coaching, is the primary reason why the Spurs have the second best record in the league with 61 and 21. I think the main reason why Kawhi Leonard tends to fly under the radar is because he has a quiet demeanor. And while that may be good for coaching, it doesn't make for exciting TV. Look, I would love to give Kawhi the nod for MVP this season for his efficiency on both ends of the court and for his team's success, but ultimately I can't because I know his stats have been inferior when I compare them to the top two MVP candidates, James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Both of these guys have been spectacular this season, and both of these guys are worthy of winning the award, which is why many fans of the NBA have been on the fence when trying to decide who's more deserving of the MVP. By picking one, you unfortunately eliminate the other. So let's split hairs and critique both Westbrook's and Harden's performance this season. After leaving Oklahoma City for Houston, James Harden has not only become the face of the franchise, but he's also solidified his place among the superstars in the league. Harden is one of the best when it comes to finishing at the basket. He gets to the free throw line more than anyone else in the league, spreads the floor with his three point shooting, and he can pass the ball. When you combine an offensively gifted player like James Harden with an offensive minded head coach like Mike D'Antoni, and surround him with more shooters than Call of Duty, it's no surprise when he puts up the best numbers of his career, averaging 29 points per game, 8 rebounds, and 11 assists, helping lead his team to the third best record in the league, 
at 55 and 27. A huge jump from last year when his team barely made it into the playoffs, averaging an even 41 and 41. On the other hand, Russell Westbrook has been in Oklahoma City for his entire career, where he's had to share the spotlight with Kevin Durant until last offseason. KD decided to take his talents to Golden State, shifting the power dynamic in the NBA and leaving Russell behind to pick up the pieces. In a situation where most would have crumbled under the pressure and scrutiny, Russell stepped up and put together one of the greatest seasons we've ever witnessed. Averaging a triple-double with 31 points per game, 10 rebounds and 10 assists on 42% shooting from the field, helping lead the Thunder to a 47-35 and record and securing the sixth seed in the West. Russell Westbrook finished the season with 42 triple-doubles, breaking the previous record of 41 set by Oscar Robertson back in 1962. When you put aside the glory of Russell's record-breaking season and actually compare his stats to Harden's, they're pretty similar. Even though Russell Westbrook had a slight advantage over James Harden statistically, I don't think it's single-handedly enough to make a convincing case against James Harden. And while the Houston Rockets did have more wins than the Thunder this season, it wouldn't be fair to give James Harden the MVP for being on a superior team with only 8 more wins than the Thunder. If wins were the primary differentiating factor in who gets MVP every year, then Curry would be getting his third MVP for being on the Golden State Warriors. If you can't give Russell the edge based on stats alone, and you can't give Harden the edge based on wins alone, then you gotta start looking at different factors, like what kind of impact each player has had on their team. If you take Russell off the Thunder and Harden off the Rockets, I think neither team makes it to the playoffs. But what if you reverse the roles and you put Harden on the Thunder and Westbrook on the Rockets? Do you think they finish with a better or worse record? And what happens to their individual stats? Personally, I think if you put Harden on the Thunder, the team wouldn't have the same success they had with Russell. And Harden's stats are probably not as good as they are now. But if you were to put Russell on the Rockets with a Mike D'Antoni offense and some bona fide shooters to help him spread the floor, not only do I think Russell's stats would get better, but I think they'd actually be a legitimate threat to get out of the Western Conference. But these are hypothetical situations and MVPs don't get awarded based on hypotheticals. Ironically, both of these guys faced off in the first round of the playoffs. And even though the playoffs don't count towards the MVP, after watching the series, I realized how much more of an impact Russell Westbrook had on the success of the Thunder versus James Harden's impact on the success of the Rockets. When Russell was on the floor, they would outscore the Houston Rockets. But the moment he sat down, the Rockets would outscore the Thunder by a lot. We're on a three Steven, second time in three games, uh, you guys really struggled when Russell went to the bench. You were out there for part of that. What goes on when he goes to the bench? Why is Houston so successful? And, and do you sense that, that they sort of get an energy boost just from him going out of the game? Hold on, Steven. <clears throat> I don't want nobody to try to split us up. We all one team. Regardless, if I go to the bench, if Steven's on the floor, if I'm off the floor, we in this together. Don't split us up. Don't try to split us up. Don't try to make us go against each other. Try to make against Russell and the rest of the guys, Russell against Houston. I don't, want, I don't want to hear that. We in this together, we playing as a team, and that's all that matters, that's it. It's no surprise that Houston won the series four to one. Harden clearly had a more dominant supporting cast, which to me further vindicates Russell's case for MVP because he was able to do a lot more with less talent. But because the MVP votes are cast before the playoffs start, it's hard to give credence to this argument. So, like many tight MVP races in the past, the winner is going to be distinguished by their storyline. An important factor in most MVP races and kind of where it becomes a popularity contest. If every other factor is debatable, then this would have to be the one area where you can draw a clear distinction between the two. James Harden had ideal conditions coming into this season. When compared to Russell Westbrook, who had to deal with the media storm that followed the departure of KD. It takes a special kind of player to rise above the challenge and over exceed expectations. Known as one of the most explosive players in the league, Russell Westbrook single handedly willed this team into the playoffs. While displaying the maturity and mental fortitude it takes to fill the vacuum left behind when one of the best players in the world leaves your team. Sprinkle on the fact that he led the league in scoring and he averaged a triple double, breaking the record while simultaneously hitting a game winning three and eliminating the Nuggets from the playoffs, and you have a perfect ending. 
to an MVP year. That's why no matter what the outcome, my MVP this year is Russell Westbrook. Thanks for staying to the end of the video. Let me know who your MVP is down in the comments section below. Make sure to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Also, don't forget, if you want some more dope content, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free, and I'm going to make it real easy for you guys. I'm going to leave a link down below. It's a little circle icon. You can just tap on my face or click on it if you're on a computer. And since the NBA is making us wait till June 26, a whole two months from now, to find out who the MVP is, Feel free to check out another one of my videos. I'm going to go ahead and leave the link over there. It's a video on the top 10 most underrated players of the 2016-2017 season. Once again, thanks for watching. I love you guys. Peace.